Pacific Forum focuses on creating better understanding uh, of why Asia is important for Americans and why America is still committed to peace and security in Asia. We try to build bridges among countries and among people, uh, both among senior people and more importantly among the next generation. Pacific Forum produces three different uh, publications. Uh, the first is the Comparative Connections, which is a journal of uh, bilateral relationships around the Asia Pacific. Second, we produce uh, PACnet newsletters, which are op-ed uh, pieces that we, we run uh, at least once a week. We use those as a way to uh, have commentary on the, on the current news events uh, that are occurring around the region. And third, we produce uh, issues and insights, which are lengthier uh, articles about uh, events in the region. I would think about Pacific Forum programming in two ways. One of them is the obvious, and those are the conferences that we run that keep us on the road almost constantly. As part of those discussions, there is the ongoing meetings and distillation of the insights from those larger efforts that we pass on to decision makers in Washington, in Tokyo, in Seoul, in Beijing a constant process of churn whereby we share our insights, they give, trade us their own thoughts, and we constantly try to hone, refine, and update our thinking and our interpretation of events. Our genuine contribution and where our real legacy lies is in our efforts, I think, to engage the next generation of decision makers, policy makers, and analysts in this region and beyond. It is the Young Leaders Program and the Fellows that I think will truly be remembered as the legacy and the most outstanding and important contribution of the last 10 years, the Ralph Koss era of Pacific Forum. When the Young Leader Program started in 2004, we had less than 50 young leaders. Now we have over 360 from 26 different countries. For young leaders who want to pursue a fellowship with the Pacific Forum, we have five fellowships. The Vasey Fellowship established in honor of Pacific Forum founder and former president, Admiral Lloyd Vasey, provides young Asian scholars with the opportunity to work at the Pacific Forum as a junior researcher for three to six months. The Sasakawa Peace Foundation Fellowship sponsors American and Japanese fellows who focus on the U.S.-Japan alliance, while the WSD Honda Fellowship supports a broader base of fellows who are interested in European and East Asian security issues. Through the generous support of Ambassador Alfonso Yuchenko, a select group of young Filipino and Philippine Americans are able to routinely participate in the Young Leader programs. And finally, we have the Kelly Fellowship established through an anonymous and generous grant from a Korean American. This program recognizes the exemplary efforts of former Assistant Secretary of State and Pacific Forum President Emeritus James Kelly. In having the Kelly Fellows, we have some very able and well-selected young people who are able to dedicate uh, their research efforts for a particular period of time towards uh, working on problems within the U.S. and the Korean relationship. This is an events and current affairs driven uh, fellowship. It's characteristic of Pacific Forum being involved in the here and now and not necessarily a, a historical analysis of things uh, long ago. An extraordinarily important development at the Pacific Forum has been the creation and oversight execution of the Council on Security Cooperation for the Asia Pacific, CSCAP. And through CSCAP uh, and the leadership of CSCAP at the Pacific Forum, we have been able to be an important, in fact, the most important track two institution in the Asia Pacific dealing with uh, security and political events. Welcome to Las Vegas, everyone. You may thank the United States State Department for your invitation to Sin City. For those of you that don't know me, and it's a very few of you, I'm Brad Glossom, and I'm the Executive Director of the Pacific Forum, CSIS. For those of you that don't know, the Young Leaders Program is to teach you as much as possible about the issues. We are hoping that you folks as young leaders actually have something to contribute to these discussions as well. Our objective is to get you to mingle both with the seniors. Don't think of yourself as second-class citizens. Every opportunity you get, coffee, breaks, meals, whatever, Ralph will encourage them and I encourage you. Do not be shy. It's equally important that you mingle among yourselves. One of the most important, and I think perhaps the most enduring legacy of this particular project is to build the community of next generation specialists. So it's important that you guys get to know each other, that you spend time together, that your interaction with each other go beyond merely that of the formal sessions and even the breaks.
In a list, um, would you be able to name three things that you've gained being a part of Pacific Forum's Young Leader Program? I think the one of the most important parts of the Young Leaders Program is being able to hang out with the senior participants. To um, meet the kind of thought leaders in this field, the highly experienced uh, experienced professionals um, who, who are kind of um, at the for forefront of the, these issues. Uh, by sitting in on, on these sort of meetings, you get a sense of the complexities and the, and the various dynamics and the difficulties of, of finding consensus in such a large group. But you also see the importance of it. The interaction with uh, some of the senior people here, I, 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 was, I thought it was a real privilege to interact with uh, Jeffrey Lewis. I, uh, you know, I uh, read his uh, blog uh, quite often. I, I never imagined that I'll have a chance to uh, meet with him. The network among the young leaders themselves and also the network between the young leaders and the experts in this area. And we can see a lot of wide range of participants in the CSCA meeting. And this is very good. I, I made lots of friends here and I expanded my network, my professional network. If I'm doing research about any of these topics. I have people who I know I can go to. I Hopefully in the future these will be the movers and shakers and we'll have the relationships already established so it'll be easier going forward hopefully to generate consensus on policy views. Going to the CSCAP meeting has been really beneficial. I mean not only am I given the opportunity to meet senior experts, I'm also given the opportunity to meet senior experts that were once young leaders and you know it's really nice to be able to talk to somebody that was once in my position and it's really nice also knowing that you know at some point I too will be where they are at as well. Many of our young leaders from five six years ago are now starting to move into uh, positions of responsibility. I would expect five years from now there'll be more of them in those positions and we'll be able to hold dialogues uh, to help them do their jobs and to help their countries uh, move closer to cooperating with one another. My name is Lyndon Burford. Uh, I'm here representing CSCAP New Zealand. My name is David Santoro. Right now I'm working for the International Institute for Strategic Studies in London. Uh, my uh, specialization is uh, US foreign policy, uh, Vietnam US relations. Probably one of the first key advantages is, is simply networking with a fantastic bunch of people. It gets you involved into the policy world and into how you know, policy making processes actually work. So I've learned a lot on, 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 that, on that, which you're not really exposed to in your academic work. This really has been an opportunity to, to get so much good critical feedback on my own ideas, to encounter new ideas. Most of my work is linked um, to the Young Leaders Program. With the expertise I, I develop, uh, you know, I think uh, I'm being more useful and more, you know, I think uh, more visible to to some uh, you know uh, policy makers uh, who works on these issues uh, in my countries. Pacific Forum does a lot of good things. It gets a lot of return for its investment. But I find it hard to think of anything better than the young leaders. Bring the new generation of people who are going to control the future of Asia-U.S. relations. Uh, bring them together. Uh, let them develop ideas together. Let them become friends. Let them when they later become in positions of influence, be able to pick up the phone and suddenly know who to call and be listened to with credibility. That's a terrific investment. Well, before closing, I would like to uh, thank all of the donors and uh, supporters of the Pacific Forum today and back over the years, because I think you're, you're getting a very excellent return on your, event, your investment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and for your support to the Pacific Forum. Mahalo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone and uh, we certainly appreciate your uh, long-term support uh, for the programs and uh, look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks. Really thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There are a lot of people to thank uh, with respect to Pacific Forum, CSIS, and the things that it has accomplished over the years, and no one more than Admiral Joe Vasey. Uh, I also want to thank the donor who has uh, brought to the Pacific Forum the Kelly Fellows. Uh, this is a program that fits so well 
with uh, what I have uh, been dedicated myself over the years. I was honored uh, that my name was going to be associated with this in some way. It is certainly something in which I deeply believe and I'm very happy to support the idea of the Kelly Fellows and this has been reinforced by the quality of the individuals who have been selected for that position over the years.